today we're going to look at mathematical patterns. So yeah, go to the blog, currentsoft.com slash interactive graphics. Click on this link, the canvas starter code. And that just gives us this red square. So I'm going to get rid of this line of code right here. One of the first things I want to introduce to you guys is this concept of a nested for loop. You could have a for loop inside another for loop. So here we have all pairs of all the numbers from 0 to 3. So this is kind of like a matrix. So I grabbed this figure from Wikipedia, an m by n matrix. There's this concept of m by n is the dimension of the matrix, and m corresponds to i, and n corresponds to j. In, in JSBIN, let's start writing a little program that will draw us a grid of circles, say. Uh, you might want to uncheck this box, because when you're typing the for loop code, it might get into an infinite thing, infinite loop. So I'm going to declare my variables first, var i, var j. And by the way, there's a, an interesting pattern that people use with variable declaration. You can actually declare more than one variable at once. So instead of having var i and then var j, you could type var i comma j, like that. This is usually what people do. They declare all their variables first in one statement, and then they use them in the function. So let's make our outer for loop. For, remember this is, this is how I like to type code. Type the general structure first, and then fill in the details. So it's for, begin end parentheses, and then begin end curly brace. And um, that curly brace can go on to the next line. And then in the parentheses, i equals 0, the initialization step. i is less than, see, if we look at the matrix thing, i corresponds to m. And I want to make this sort of general code. So I'm going to make another variable m and set that equal to 10. So i is less than m, semicolon, i++. Plus plus. And then you can copy and paste that inside of itself, and make sure you get the indentation right, and change the inner i's to j's, and change m to n. And we have to make that variable n. I'm going to make that 10 also, and j++. Plus plus. So all the inner i's should be turned to j's, and that m should become an n. And in here, I'll just type the same thing I typed before, just to make sure it's working at this point. Console.log i, comma, j. And now if I run it, I get these hundred different uh, combinations of numbers, which is correct. So what we're going to do is draw a grid of graphical things. i is going from 0 to n minus 1. j is going from 0 to n minus 1. And I want to map up to link up i with the x coordinate on the screen. So going from left to right. And then j should correspond to the y coordinate going up and down. And the way I like to do this is first introduce some other variables that vary between 0 and 1. And then use those values to calculate the pixel coordinates for the graphical shapes. So I'll just make this a little more readable here. Um, I'm going to introduce two more variables, u and v. So we have i, j, u, v. And make sure you get the commas right. Like if you leave out a comma like this, it's a big deal. It doesn't work. So make sure you get all the commas right. But the last one should be a semicolon with the variables. So inside these for loops, I'm going to say u is equal to i. But I really want u to be a function of i. And u should vary between 0 and 1. So right now, u varies between 0 and m minus 1, really. The maximum value for i is m minus 1. So if we divide i by m, 
that gets us in the range between 0 and you know m minus 1 over m but really what we want is m minus 1 i over m minus 1 will give us uh, values between 0 and 1 so if we print out the value of u here but it looks like we get the right thing it starts at 0 and then it goes to 1 And I'm going to do the same thing for uh, V. So I'm going to copy that line and paste it. And then say V equals, change the I to a J, and change that M to an N. So now we have U and V both varying between 0 and 1, but independently of one another. To get the X, Y pixel coordinates that we need, we're going to multiply U so u goes between 0 and 1, and we can spread that out by multiplying it. So if we multiply that number by the width of the canvas, it'll give us these you know, evenly spaced things going from 0 to the width of the canvas. So I'm going to introduce two more variables here, x and y. And then I'm going to compute x. So x equals u times uh, canvas dot width. And we can copy and paste that line, changing x to y, changing u to v, and changing canvas.width to canvas.height. And now we can use the rectangle drawing command from, that we used last time. We're, we already have this canvas context C to work with, so we can call c.fillrect. And fill rect takes as arguments the x, y, width, and height of the, the rectangle. So we can give it x, y. For the width and the height, um, I'd like to make another variable. I'll call it size. Say 10. 10 pixels. 10 by 10 pixels. So I've made another variable called size. And I'm going to use that size variable as the width and the height of the rectangle. So x, y, comma, size, comma, size. And bam, there we go. So actually, I'd like to make these circles. Let's figure out how to draw circles in HTML5 Canvas. So if you don't know how to do something in, in Canvas, just Google it, and you'll be able to find out. So here's this simple drawing a circle tutorial. Um, here it is. Here's the basic formula. You call begin path, then arc, and then set the fill style, which is the color of it, and then call fill. So let's follow that uh, formula. So instead of fill rect, let's call c dot begin path, begin and then uppercase p path. Call it as a function. Begin and uh, parentheses and then c dot arc a r c and the first two arguments to arc are the x and y pixel coordinates so x comma y the third one is the radius so we'll use size for that the fourth and fifth arguments are the begin and end angle for the arc so the first one will be zero and the second one, for a circle, it's going to be all the way around the circle. And it, this is in radians, so it's going to be 2 pi, 2 times pi. So we can use uh, 2 times uppercase M math dot pi capitals. So pi is provided for us. And then after this line, we can call C dot fill. And there we go, we have circles. I'm just going to make it a little smaller so we can see it all. So let's make some crazy patterns now and animate it. So remember last time? Last time we animated using a function called set interval. But there's actually a problem with doing animation with set interval because set interval is not linked up with the refresh rate of the display. You can use uh, this function called request animation frame. 
which is much better because it's synchronized with the update of the display and it gives you really smooth animations. Let's put these for loops in a function that we can call every frame in order to update the display. So let's make a function draw, say. And remember, this is the this is the general formula of a function. Actually, last time we we used var draw equals a function like this, assigning a function to a variable. And there's an alternative syntax that you can use that does really the same thing, and that is function draw like this. So this defines a function and assigns it to a variable called draw, pretty much. And so inside these curly braces should go all this code. So I'm going to select all of it and then indent it. So it's not drawing anything because we're not calling the function yet. So if we call the function now, draw like this, it should it draws. And then let's introduce a concept of time. So I'm going to add another variable called time after size. So I'm going to get rid of that semicolon, add a comma, and say time equals zero. Time starts off at zero. And time is going to increment every frame by some number. Right now, draw gets called just once. But in order, for to, for to, in order to schedule draw to be called many times, we can use request animation frame. So at the end of the draw function, after the for loop, we can call this function request animation frame. So request animation frame. And request animation frame takes one argument, which is the function that should be called on the next frame. And that function is the draw function. It's the function that's, that it's in. So we can pass draw here as a parameter. And now see the edges are all pixelated because it's, it's drawing the circles all on top of each other over and over and over. To, to animate something, we can, uh, right before request animation frame, we can say time equals time plus, say, 0 0.1. And we can add time to u plus time. So you see, it, it, it all went off the screen. Let's make time plus uh, 0 0.01. So we have the same problem we had last time where we're not clearing the canvas. So before the for loops, let's clear the canvas. Uh, that function is c.clearRect. Zero, 0, is x, y, and then width, height is the width and height of the canvas itself. So canvas.width and then canvas.height. Whoa. So we can do a lot of stuff at this point. So I'm going to show you a couple things we can do, and then I want you guys to explore the space of possibilities and post your awesome things on the blog as comments. We can add to x math.sign of time. This would be plus. So if we multiply sine of time by, say, 50, now it's going back and forth by 50 pixels. Back and forth. Remember, this is what a sine wave looks like. It just goes up and down. It's the sine function between negative 1 and 1. So now they're all moving at, at the same p time, you know, together. But if we take math dot sine of time plus i, say, whoa, now, there, now there's this wave effect. And if we say time plus j, it's like a horizontal wave effect. So just to make the code a little bit more simple, I'm going to make some aliases for things that we're going to use a lot. So var sign equals math dot sign. And I think I'll rename time to t, just so we don't have to type all those letters. 
So now, now our code is a little bit simpler. Sine of t plus j. And we can start messing with the y coordinate also. I'm going to copy and paste that. Whoa, now we have this strange, you know, diagonal wave effect. But if instead of sine, we use cosine, so we're going to make a cosine, this is math dot cos. So cosine and sine are basically the same function, but sine starts at 0 and cosine starts at 1. So if we use sine and cosine, uh, now they're all moving in circles. Let's see, if we just if we just use sine of t and cosine of t, you see they're all moving in a circle. And we could try things like multiply it by j. Um, this is super weird. <laughs> And you can also do things like change n and m. Like if n becomes 30, you have a lot more vertical than horizontal. You can make size 4, say. So we can also assign the value of size to be a function of these x, y, and i time and stuff. So I'll set this back. So if you guys want to post these to the blog, the way to do it is first click on bins, create milestone, and you'll notice the URL changes. And then you can just copy and paste this URL into the comment section of the blog. You know, we just paste it. Just paste it right there. So check this out. We can also assign size as a function. So size equals, let's say u. Remember, u goes from 0 to 1. So if we multiply u times uh, 10, it's increasing in size as you go from left to right. And if we use v instead, it increases as you go up and down. Um, but we can make sign a function of u and v, like sine of. Uh, U. And by the way, I can use sign here because I made sign a variable up here. And I I made an alias. You know, I just assigned this math.sign as a sign as the vari as a local variable. So I don't have to type math.sign all the time. So remember sign goes from negative one to one. And size should be a positive number. So in order to get sign to be positive, we need to add one to it. This'll this will give us a number between 0 and 2. You know? So if we put that in parentheses, we can multiply that by like 5. So if we have time in there, it's getting bigger and smaller. But if we multiply u by some factor, uh, you check out what happens. If you multiply u by 10, the wave gets smaller. And if you multiply u by, say, 30, the wave is even smaller. I'm going to make it like 30 by 30. So you can just tweak tweak the numbers. You can find some really neat uh, patterns. And you can combine everything. So as the size is changing, you can also change the x, say. So here's some weird like wave, sound wave sort of things. J, like whoa, there we got waves going up and down. So here's one from Brandon, that looks pretty cool. It's got the color with the strokes. Yeah, if you look at the circle thing, um, you can you can use stroke also. Stroke draws an outline around the circle, and you could set the stroke width, the line width of the stroke, make it bigger and smaller as a function of time, for example. 
You could also set the color. C dot fill style equals say blue. You could actually set the color depending on something. So you could say if uh, size is greater than uh, four, then make the fill style blue. Oh, I guess size is never greater than four. And then else uh, could be red, say. So now you see it's red along the fringes. So you can just try using all the language features uh, that we had before, like the if. Whoa, check out this one from Jonathan. That's pretty cool. So I didn't get to cover all this stuff today, but there, there's some more material on this blog post for today. There's all these links. And if you want, you can click them and check them out. Um, like you can use polar coordinates also. Get a circular thing going. Let's see what we got. Whoa, this one's cool. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's awesome. So you guys can be the next generation of, you know, visual artists for concerts. Oh.